So I'm trying to establish the the sky here. Uh, what I what I do is uh, try to get like a blue green because uh, the sky is blue green and uh, also if you are sure to establish the blue green at the sky everything that you put in the orange uh, family is gonna pop more so I already applied the heavy paint in the in the front but still you know pre uh, Press more attention to values. I got already like the the bases of the foreground. Now I have to see what calls up uh, those pines, the leaf of those pines. I see it's kind of. Uh, you got the different kind of greens. You got the dull green and you got the bright uh, green hit by the sun. So I start always with the dull one. That's the, the, the way it should be. So I remained in the in the bottom. So let me see those the top part of the trees there in the back where they are in related uh, where they are related to the to the composition so they they are in the middle so this is the middle and they in the third in the road third side so let me put those three over there in the back So the painting looks very dull right now, but that's the way it's supposed to be because this is like the basis to put the bright colors on top and they can uh, be more notice noticeable. So I use uh, at the beginning just one brush because you're going to be mixing the same color over and over and uh, in the palette. The only thing you're doing is uh, you add more yellow, you tilt it to the yellow, you add more red, you tilt it to the red. But uh, that uh, don't allow you to get too far away from the color and start keeping the, the painting uh, cohesive. You know, like, like uh, the colors, uh, they develop in harmony because uh, you're using the residuals of paint every time you mix a new color from the paint that you applied before. So in plain painting, everything is about color and value. Shape, don't worry about shape because there is no time in plain painting to do shape, to develop too much the, unless you're painting like a building or something. But uh, when you're painting trees, you cannot paint every single uh, leaf. So, So I see that there is no shadow here. But before I work on the shadow, let me see if I draw the sub green because you know sub green. If you get like a, a, a yellow, a coming yellow. And you mix it with the with a blue, uh, a, a blue green preferably, like the like the cerulean blue or, or the taro, because the, the the ultramarine blue got red on it. So as soon as you put it with the with the green, it tend to dull the green. Uh, you wanna get the sub green, mix, mixing the common yellow with the, a taro or a cerulean blue. But uh, why buy? Why use? The expensive, very expensive common yellow when you can buy a, a troop of uh, a sub green. Okay. 
So I'm trying to focus on creating more saturation. Saturation and uh, brightness uh, in the front, so I can create depth. So look at this. Those three there, I haven't done the highlight. As soon as I put anything like that, the highlight is gonna pop immediately. But now you have to be sure that that highlight is more uh, cold than the front. So I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, blue. And uh, the yellow that I'm gonna use is gonna be the, the limo yellow. So I can keep it uh, in the cold in the coal family. You know, even if it is uh, warm, it's gonna be uh, colder. And, uh, you know, all these things that I uh, say here, the way I paint, more, most of them, I learned it in the studio painting there. I. I start recently. I start. I start recently painting in plain air, and uh, after I made the first one, I fall in love with this. I realized that the, that was like the next step to really grab uh, the principles of painting. And surprisingly, uh, I, I you know the first painting I did plain air, it was it was uh, an okay painting. Uh, the only reason it was okay is because uh, I have been painting for a long time the, in the studio. So I know the principles uh, of, the, of how to make a painting. Uh, and then the, the planar painting, what, what it does is that uh, take you to the next level. Uh, because it helps you to paint faster, to paint uh, more loose. And, uh, I realized that the painting loose is a must have in the arsenal of skills because uh, people, to me, they kind of tired of uh, of photograph, so they want something more like loose. So heavy paint. You come forward when you do heavy paint. Keep it, uh, keep it, uh, you know, thin in the back. And heavy in the front. So this side, this side, this one is not popping. As, as fast as I do this, it come forward already. So I got these three, uh, but this is getting behind the, the trail. So I have to incorporate a little bit of it. This thing is the king of the brightness, of the brightness, you know, there's nothing more uh, that can uh, you know saturate more coals and and give me give more like uh, warm than the, the camion yellow. So camion yellow is something that you have to use very careful. Uh, you see this dull pile. I just put a little bit of camion yellow immediately. Got very. So I'm gonna keep this brush for that kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, local color, and then I'm gonna get a different uh, uh, brush to kind of uh, play with the complementary of that one. That's is like a very yellow uh, uh, local color. So I have to look for the the blue one, but the blue I'm gonna use the meridian. I'm gonna mix it in this pile. 
Yeah, the, the Maria is a very cold blue. So when you put the, Medi the Meridian, that's a color, it's gonna help. Uh, Uh, bring the yellow one the, uh, forward. You know, if you think that you're gonna bring yellow forward, adding more yellow and more yellow, more yellow, it's not gonna work. You have to use the complement. Uh, and the the more to the the more to the to the front the more separation you have to have between the complement and uh, and the local color you know both of them are local but uh, you have to separate more the difference you know uh, make more obvious the difference between them and then the more they receive to the back it get closer together you almost look like the same color but uh, but no you have to have also the complements in the back you see the brush is getting a little bit dirty with the, the different colors, but I keep working with it. I keep I keep working with it to the back because uh, the more dirty get, the more close together. So there is some spot of sun right there in the back. So what I do, I get this one. So I need a little bit more of contrast, you know, the shadows and stuff. And that's what I'm gonna add now. So I'm reserving the focal point to the end, which is gonna be these two plants in the middle and this one. Uh, and some trees, but I'm uh, still far away from that. It's unbelievable the paint with the sun, how thin it gets. Like a very dark purple here, purple yellow, with a mix of uh, burn, uh, burn amber, uh, alizarin crimson, and uh, uh, ultramarine blue. So the, the tree, the same tree, even if it is uh, the closer to you, the, the more far away go, uh, like going up, you have to start like getting the colors more uh, dull, less saturated, because the same thing happened in landscape, uh, you know, in the vanish point, the more far away, the more the closer to the vanish point, vanish point, the same thing happened in the tree also, uh, going up, everything lose intensity. So you can do, you know, create that perspective of uh, the tree 
is going up, it's going away from, away from you. So this is my Wanda, my Maggi Wanda. So, you know, how to create the round surface? What I found out, uh, you know, something that I found out, I didn't invent it, uh, that's something that's very old, but nothing round to uh, finish in the lightest light or in the darkest dark. Never. You want to find something that finish that is round in the lightest light of the, you know, the lightest light of the object. I'm not talking about the lightest light or the darkest dark of the whole painting of the object. Never it finish in uh, in the darkest dark of the object or the lightest light of the object when it's uh, round. A lot of people, you know, the highlight they put it on one side of the tree and the lightest light of the highlight they put it right on the edge uh, it, it, it's not like that That's, that doesn't create uh, uh, a convincing the object so I'm trying to keep some the some trees uh, You know, you see that all the other trees, the shadow is on the right. So I have to be consistent with that. But I'm trying to put first like the local color. You know, this this pine tree got uh, some very nice texture. With uh, I can see orange in complement with the. Uh, a very dirty brown. Okay, so this size like getting too much weight. So I have to create something here. I, I hate to create the balance with the same object. So I'm gonna look for something in this size that uh, can help me to to balance the painting. And let me get a clean brush because it's gonna be probably. What I have in mind is a saturated color. Okay, this is the the more intense color you can get in the in the green family, and it is uh, you get the green sub green. And you add uh, camion yellow. But probably there is not even nothing like with this color in the. So I kind of uh, balance the painting.
doing that there. can see that this thing here doesn't work immediately because nothing in the middle works right? you know the, the more I paint the more I realize that in the middle nothing works you get to the point or you do stuff that you realize that it was better before before you you know before the way it was before compared with the, what you just uh, did and it's difficult to combat but you cannot be scared of that you have to To try because in the first play you got to that previous uh, thing that was good uh, trying try new thing trying you know new things okay now this area here had to recede and there is some pine that are closer so I had to add bright you know more bright color there So this is just uh, ages, what I'm doing, you know, uh, trying to keep a little bit everything more smooth in the back, but at the same time uh, create a little bit harder ages. This brush is very long, it's very flexible. So it helped me to apply the texture without contaminating the color with the one underneath. I use it uh, in the last stages of the painting. try to make some highlights on the tree so this is the one that I use or another long one so highlight is uh, most of the time in the color of the sky 
it's reflecting. Uh, together with the, a combination in, in a combination with the with the OJ, you know, the, with the local color. So how to have both of them? I really think that the sky would be uh, more light would help a lot and that's the problem with painting that uh, you start realizing about thing and I get to a point that there is too much uh, paint in the canvas and uh, it, you can just damage the painting but uh, I feel so tense to put lightest color there in the back that I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it Let's see what happened. I think it's gonna have the painting a lot. I, I knew that was going this was going to happen. Uh, because the, the sky is the lightest thing in the painting. Sometimes you're trying to get the color that you see. You just uh, get it too dark. How it look better, nobody's gonna know because the one before is gone already. But I think it's better than this. So let me show you guys what I got here. Then that's uh, the composition. But since uh, this is a wide angle lens, this is the way that really look. And then the wide angle lens of the camera distorts the view. That's one of the reasons it's not good to paint from photograph unless the lens that they use is a 50 millimeter lens, which is the closest lens uh, uh, to the eye, the human eye. So never paint landscape from photograph unless it is a 50 milliliter uh, lens, and that's a problem that nobody take photos of landscape with 50 millimeter uh, lens because it looks boring. Uh, so everybody use the wide angle lens for landscape. So. It's better to come to the place and do it uh, direct from nature. Look at that, how beautiful is that animal? You can see that it's a wild deer. He's not used to people. That's where I am. Son, you've come to the wrong man That's one thing I sure don't know 
Well, I stayed up there on the mountain a while to see what I could see. And I looked out over this whole wide world in its awesome majesty. But then my gaze fell down to the city and the fires and the smoke below. And I shook my head and asked myself, now where did our garden go? Street. I talked with all my friends and neighbors and anyone.